Hello, my name is Don Dickerman, and I realize that you're probably watching this in your living room, maybe because you read our book, When Pigs Move In. Uh, maybe you heard about our ministry some other way. But regardless, uh, you're watching this because you're interested and want to know more about deliverance. And uh, what I want to talk about is a, a brief teaching about deliverance, how it works, and then I want to take you through deliverance by going into the uh, so-called courtroom of the Lord Jesus and uh, speaking truth. This is all about truth. It's about a truth encounter, never about power, never a question about the authority of the name of Jesus. So uh, I want to answer a couple of questions that we get frequently about this subject. And uh, I, I think maybe the number one question is, what is a demon? Uh, when you talk about it, it's not a word you hear a lot in church or in Sunday school. Uh, Jesus called them evil spirits, unclean spirits, uh, foul spirits, devils. There are many references in Scripture about demons. And uh, Jesus dealt with demons. He dealt with the people's need to be free in about one-third of his ministry. Uh, for some reason, it's pretty quiet in the churches and it's not talked about much. And I realize that you've probably not been exposed to uh, the, the truth about demons. Uh, having demons uh, is really not a big deal. If you're alive in the world today, there's a, a, a good chance that you've encountered a demon spirit, opened the door uh, to a demon spirit. Uh, the demons that get inside of believers uh, actually live in the flesh or in the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions, but they don't get in our spirit. That would be possession. What we're talking about is demonic oppression. And uh, the doorways that would open, uh, give permission to a demon to live in a believer, uh, there are numerous, numerous doorways, uh, not necessarily an invitation, not that you invited a demon spirit in, but you granted permission. And uh, that's uh, similar to opening a door uh, to the outside and flies coming in and wasps coming in and uh, uh, other things coming in. Not because you invited them, but you gave them permission to come in by leaving an opening. And so that's what we're talking about is uh, what demons do, what they are. They're fallen angels. All demons once had a position uh, with God as created beings to minister uh, the characteristics of God. Uh, all angels were created to minister to believers. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who are the heirs of salvation? When they fell, when they rebelled against God, they became opposites of their creative purpose. And so now, instead of ministering for us, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that they, as demons, make war against the saints. So we're talking about spirits that were created initially uh, to worship God, uh, to minister to God's people who are now the opponents and intrinsically evil in their work. Jesus said the things that demons do is rob steal, kill, destroy. There's no such thing as a demon being a good part of anyone's life. And so uh, Jesus said about demons, cast them out. Uh, he gave us authority to do that. People, people ask the question many times, how can I be a Christian, have the Holy Spirit living in me and also have demons there? And let me just say a, a simple way to look at that is, how can you have sinful thoughts? How can you have a cold? How, how can you have germs in your life? How can you have anything that's contrary to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is light and truth. Uh, demons are the opposite. They're darkness. They're lies. That's what they do. But every believer uh, has a past. You all have an ancestry. You all have a childhood. There's been traumas in all of our lives permissions, legal rights granted to demons. As far as them being in believers, uh, Jesus ministered 
uh, all through the New Testament, the people he ministered to were children of Abraham. They were Jewish people who believed in God. The Bible says by faith that, that we are the children of Abraham. So we through Christ are exactly what Jesus was ministering to uh, before the cross. In the book of Mark, a man came uh, to Jesus and said, um, we, we forbade a man who was cast, we told a man that to quit casting out demons because he doesn't follow us, he's not one of us. And Jesus called deliverance a miracle. He said, no man can do these miracles in my name and speak lightly of me. So deliverance is a miracle. It's the hand of God, it's the word of God being applied to someone's life. And this woman in, uh, in, in the book of uh, Matthew came to Jesus when he was up in Tyre and Sidon in Gentile country. This Gentile woman came to him and said, my little girl is grievously vexed with the devil. My little girl, innocent little girl, is vexed grievously with the devil. And Jesus uh, virtually paid her no attention until she continued, fell at his feet, and, uh, and, and began to, to ask the question, help me, Lord, I need your help. Jesus said, I'm not come, but to the lost sheep of Israel. He said, basically, you don't qualify. You're a Gentile. But when she worshiped him and said, even the puppies eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. When she worshiped him, he said, oh, now, now you're in, now you're one of the believers, you qualify. And she not only, not only did he say that to her and about her, but he said, great is your faith and be it unto you according as you will. Your little girl is healed this hour. And so the demons were cast out by Jesus from a distance as the woman believed and qualified. What she asked for was deliverance and healing. And Jesus called that children's bread. The, the bread that we're talking about today is children, it's for the children. So if you're a child of God and you have some areas of your life that are uh, tormenting you, that's what demons do, they're tormentors. Uh, the things that we need to, to talk about today is what gives the demons rights to do that? What's their legal right? Uh, and God recognizes legal rights. It's all about legal rights. Uh, in a moment, we're gonna go into what I call the courtroom of deliverance. And I'll lead you through uh, repentance prayers, confession prayers, and then I'll bind demons and cast them out. But I, I want you to know that uh, demons have legal rights from our ancestry many times. That can be from uh, vows, uh, it can be from things that people got involved in in your, in your ancestry that you wouldn't necessarily know about. But we all have an ancestry. Uh, we all had a, a childhood. Everyone's had a childhood with some traumas and some difficulties. And demons come through those permissions. Uh, everybody's experienced a trauma, a difficulty in life, a, a wound in your heart. Many times demons come in through those things. Uh, the works that they do uh, many times can be Many times uh, the, the works that a, a demon would do would be in the area of fear. That's, that's one of the, the most common spirits that we run into is spirits of fear. Uh, nightmares, uh, anxieties, uh, and, and I don't think we even need to talk about all those things because most people know the things that are not from God. But many times demons are the source of these things. They get in our soul, in our flesh, in our mind. Uh, that's, uh, and I, I would encourage you not to think too much about demons and give them uh, too much space. Um, I, don't, um, I, don't, I don't give them credit for a lot of things that they would like for me to in, in this sense. I don't fear what they're going to do to me, what they threaten to do to me, to my family, all the lies that they tell me. The power of the demon is when we believe their lie. And when we encounter it with truth, and that's why I always say about uh, deliverance, it's a truth encounter. It's all, ab all about truth. And uh, another thing I, I wanna say about 
uh, one of the things that, that we talk about many times is permission. What, what gives a demon permission to do something? Uh, they, can't, they can't just say, let's go get Don Dickerman. That's not an option they have. We'd all be dead. Uh, I, must, I must somehow grant them legal rights. Generally, unforgiveness is, is probably the number one thing we see in the church today that grants legal rights to demons. Jesus said this, and uh, it's a summary of what he said, but he, he told a parable uh, to this man. He said a man had a great debt and he couldn't pay it. A uh, hundred and, you know, thousands of, of dollars, a, an unbelievable debt. And he, uh, the, the man went to the, the one he owed the debt to and said, I can't pay this. I, I just can't do it, but I'll do the best I can. And so he, he was forgiven. The man said, you're forgiven this great debt that you have. But then the man who had been forgiven went out and found someone that owed him $18 and said, pay me or I'll have you put in prison. And Jesus, at the end of this parable, he said, so likewise will your heavenly Father do unto you if you forgive not everyone, your brother, their debts. So unforgiveness is legal permission for the tormentors to move into your life. And I would say the, the, the sicknesses that we see healed uh, on a regular basis, many, many times unforgiveness and bitterness and anger uh, and vengeance are the source of those sicknesses. And so unforgiveness is an absolute doorway. And not only may, may you have had unforgiveness in your life, but the possibility is that you've repented of that, you carried it for some time and repented of it, but never cast the demons out that came in through that unforgiveness. So it's important that you close the doors, that you repent, that you confess these things. And you know what, that's not hard to do. And we're gonna do that in a moment. We're gonna go into the courtroom, I'll go with you as your attorney, and we'll confess some things before the Lord Jesus. Uh, there, there are four basic principles involving deliverance, and I want to just share those with you. Uh, number one, uh, the, the first truth about demons is you either have them or you don't. That's true. Anywhere in the world, any, anyone I'll ever meet, that'll be the first truth. You either have demons or you don't. Second thing is if you do have demons, it must be that the demon has some kind of legal right to your life. The third thing, and this is the good thing, there is no legal right a demon has that cannot be canceled in the name of Jesus. Any, anyone can repent, anyone can be forgiven, anyone can close those doors through confession. And the blood of Jesus is for forgiveness. The name of Jesus is our authority. So that's the third thing is there is no, there is no permission a demon can have that you can't cancel by repenting and, and receiving the Lord Jesus to cover that sin. The fourth thing is once these are done, once these steps are followed, the name of Jesus is absolute authority every time. So no permission, you command G uh, demons to leave in the name of Jesus, they will, they don't have an option. And the good, good thing about that is you don't have to you don't have to do a whole lot to qualify for this. You have to be one of God's children. You have to understand that you can't carry unforgiveness and, and unrepented sin in your life. You've got to separate yourselves from uh, some oaths and vows that either you made or maybe your ancestors made, some involvement in witchcraft, things like that. They must be confessed. But once they're confessed, the blood of Jesus uh, absolutely cleanses us and then demons have no legal rights. They become squatters. Once they get in, they take up residence and basically say, this is my house. This is, this, I have permission to be here. But when they're confronted in the name of Jesus, and that's what we do as a deliverance minister, is we confront demons. We don't counsel people. Uh, generally, I'd find 